Too movement has grown quickly since it went viral in 2017. Accusations of inappropriate behavior have flown across every industry, centering sometimes on big names, most recently former U.S. Vice President Joe Biden. This morning, I have University of Indianapolis Associate Professor Amanda Miller here to talk about the Me Too movement, especially as it relates to the workplace. So thanks for coming in today. Absolutely. A lot of questions. First off, I want to hear your reaction to the Me Too movement overall. What's your impression of it as it's happened in the last two years? Well, actually, the Me Too movement has been ongoing since 2006, but it's really gotten a lot of traction through social media over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. And it's a great way of empowering women through feeling like you're not alone, through a sense of empathy. Right. The whole Me Too concept is a whole room. You imagine a whole room of women raising their hands saying, I too, I too have had that experience. Unfortunately. So then as it relates to the workplace, that tends to be where a lot of these uh, come to light because people are more in control, right. you might say, of their personal situation. But at work, you're surrounded by you know, a group of people you don't necessarily choose to be around. What's the impact you've seen in the last couple of years on workplaces then? Well, one of the things that's happened is that it's not that necessarily norms have changed. Just because something was commonplace in the past didn't make it acceptable back then either. Mm -hmm. Now we're just far more aware of the, the issues of sexual harassment within the workplace and how to speak up about them. It's interesting you say that because in, uh, in former VP Joe Biden's social media statement that he made recently, he said the norms have changed and I'm a very personal, touchy person and, and now I have to change that behavior. You're saying that that is not necessarily the case. The people who were doing the harassing in the past may have felt okay about it. Um, I can guarantee that those who were harassed certainly didn't feel the same way. So they just have a different platform now. So then I guess my next question for you is I've spoken with some gentlemen uh, who have looked at the situation and said, oh my goodness, I feel terrified. I can't compliment a woman's dress now. I can't um, tell her she looks pretty before I start to think I'm going to lose my job over that. What's your reaction to that level of fear? So there's some really easy, hard and fast rules that our kindergarten teachers actually gave us. So one of those is think before you speak. And the second one is keep your hands to yourself. And if you do those two things, 95% of the time, you're going to be just fine. What are some of the things that you hope to see then as this Me Too movement continues to develop? I mean, if folks can just focus on maybe those two rules, is the Me Too movement going to become obsolete and we're not going to have any more harassment in workplaces? Well, ideally, we won't have any more her workplace harassment, whether that's women being harassed or men being harassed. Mm -hmm. The idea is that those of us who have a position of authority and some power, whether that's a teacher or a minister or a vice president, really also have an extra layer of responsibility to make sure that those that we're working with and who are working for us feel very comfortable. Now you're at UIndy here in Indianapolis. This is a national movement, and I'd argue internationally mm -hmm. in some places. Tell me about uh, your situ what, what you understand about the situation in Indianapolis. Do you see this come up uh, a lot just in our city or in central Indiana? I don't think it's any more commonplace in Indiana or Indianapolis than it is anywhere else, but I definitely think being in the Midwest, this is something that may have been a little bit slower to catch on here, mm. but now that it has, the ball's certainly rolling. Why do you think it was slower to catch on maybe in our state? I think sometimes we just are a little less cognizant of issues that are first affecting um, more national movements because mm -hmm. we are in the heartland and so it doesn't come to us quite as quickly as other things. Fascinating. We appreciate you coming in and sharing your perspective on the Me Too movement, certainly something that will likely make headlines for years into the future. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Of course. All right.